What we got today, bedlining Big Blue. So Big Blue didn't get the bedliner done inside of it last week. We did the outside. Today we're going to concentrate on the bed and some other plastic pieces we have. Here, we got everything spread out, everything we need. We're going to go through it step by step, give you the whole process, the whole rundown. So whatever you decide to do, it'll be easier for you. You'll be able to come back, watch this, reference it, and uh, let's get it done. Here are all the chemicals that are needed. You have your base coat, prep saw, adhesion promoter, and your rafter liner. You're ready to go. Safety equipment. Safety equipment, a basic... Respirator with charcoal filters. I use 3M brand. You can buy these at Harbor Freight. You can get them at Home Depot. You could buy the disposable like I got, or you can buy a little bit more expensive, the permanent mask where you have the interchangeable different filters. They have different kinds for different applications. Next, safety glasses. When you're spraying this stuff, there's gonna be times where you're spraying in corners and you're spraying underneath. It's gonna to wanna to blow back onto you. Wearing a set of safety glasses will definitely save because this stuff will sting if it gets you in the eyes. Now, I wear gloves when I'm working with this stuff. I don't want it all over my hands. It's hard to get off. It smells bad, and it will just ruin your skin. Your skin will feel terrible if this stuff gets on it. It's not healthy for you. This is bare minimum stuff. If you wanted to go one step above, you buy the disposable plastic cover suit. I do not, I'm not going to use one for this project. I have used them in the past. That would be the next step above. Now, obviously all this stuff will help, but the best is to be smart. Apply it in a well-ventilated area. You know, don't do it around things like open flames. You don't wanna be in your garage using kerosene heaters spraying this stuff because it's flammable. But if you have the glasses, the mask, the gloves, you're good to go, you're safe, and you won't be making a mess. Let's show what we got on the agenda for today. As you can see, these are the plastic pieces off of Big Blue here. We decided last week when we were doing Blue that we wanted to do the bed. Originally, we weren't going to wrap the line the bed, as weird as that sounds, because we did the whole truck. But when I had bought the kits, I wasn't sure how many I was going to need. So I have enough that I can definitely do the bed and do these plastic pieces. So the bed is going to get the same tint as the top did. Bed, plastics, all going to match. Now, for the first step, we got it prepped. Use the orbital or the interface pad, use the Scotch-Brite. So this bed originally had been washed and cleaned out. When the bed showed up here, it was a used bed, it was real dirty. So we washed it, cleaned it with some Dawn soap, we let it dry, that was a couple weeks ago. We did the rest of Big Blue's project. During this week, earlier in the week, I went to it with the orbital, I'm using, uh, I believe, a 220 on there now, and I sanded it all as best I could, got into all the nooks and crannies, and I went back over it with the Scotch-Brite, same thing, all the nooks and crannies, all the little hard to reach areas. Then I sprayed a little bit of wax and grease remover on it and wiped it down. That is all the prep you need. You could go farther if your bed has rust, if your bed has other items, dents you want to fix, you want to do body work, but if your bed is pretty much ready to spray, you wash it, clean it, sand it, wax and grease remove it, tape it, you're ready to go. These got all plastic adhesion promoter sprayed on them. This had to be scuffed because it was like a shiny plastic. These, anything that has a texture to it, like the mirrors, they have a texture. The bumper cover has a texture on the top. You don't really need to scuff that stuff. Adhesion promoter on it, do two coats, let it dry maybe 10 minutes between coats depending and then that's it it's ready to spray up we have our hardener put into the bottle we use the measuring cup eight ounces into the bottle we shook it for about two minutes we have it on our scale we have our scale zeroed now this is the most important step with it my base coat has already been tinted i made the base coat myself. I took a silver and a black that I had. I mixed them together to get about the kind of gray I was looking for. That in itself, not hard to do. You mix in whatever two colors you want until you get the tint that you want to get. Now, if you want a specific color, you can simply just go to your paint supplier, go to your paint store. You can give them a paint code. You can give them a paint chip. You could ask them for their paint chip book and say, okay, I want your book. 
I'm going to look through it. I'm going to pick this out. When it comes to buying paint, this is going to be the most confusing step of this whole project is buying the paint to taint your Raptor liner kit. It's the part besides how much to buy is the next biggest question that I had when I was doing this. So my question was, what do I need to mix with the Raptor liner? If you watch, if you read their technical data sheet, they give you two options. It's either urethane base coat without the binders, or you could use a urethane single stage. Urethane, urethane base coat is made to be sprayed and then have a clear coat sprayed over it. When you spray a urethane base coat, it has so much pigment in it versus a solid single stage has pigment all the way through because there is no clear coat over it. What goes on the panel single stage is what you see. With base coat, that goes on the panel, it'll have a dull look. It doesn't have as much color throughout it. Raptor Liner recommends either your base coat with the binders removed, so it's pure pigment, or a single stage urethane, which is already pure pigment because it's a single stage. This is urethane base coat, but this has binders in it. This is just regular base coat I had lying around from other jobs I had done. I mixed two colors together to get the color that I wanted. After doing Big Blue, I found the most important thing is measure how much of this base coat goes into that container so you get the same coverage and the same type of shading and the same basically uniformness throughout the whole project. As far as using this with the binders, I have not seen any issue with that. The only thing is when you use it with the binders, you might have to add a little bit more than you would if you just had a, a, a solid single stage color. And here on the scale, show you how we do it. Like I said, it's already got the hardener in it. We already shook it up. I'm gonna put 50 grams of this base coat into that container. Try to pour it as carefully as you can, not to make a total mess. We're gonna wash that scale. Now, if I was to go a little over on this, let's say I went to, we're getting close. Let's say I went to 55 on this one and I went a little heavier than I wanted to. You could always mix them all a little heavier. So this way you get a more uniform coat. Or if you're gonna do two coats and you know you're gonna do two coats, you could always lighten up the second coat or darken it depending on what you wanna see. Off camera, we have all our bottles mixed. We have our, all, all our hardeners, pigments, everything set to go. We put the gun together, we set our regulator. I'm gonna spray this today at 50 PSI. We're gonna spray the bed, then we're gonna spray all our plastics, and we're thinking anywhere from one to one and a half kits. Let's get going. All right, I'm gonna do a voiceover while you guys are watching me spray, and I'm gonna run back through the steps and try to give you some tips and some tricks that I might not have covered earlier in the video. So the steps are as follows. Get your product or get your project clean. Either wash it with soap and water and let it dry if you have the time, or minimum, blow it out, sweep it out, and then hit it with wax and grease remover. Your next step is your prep. I'm gonna recommend 180 to 320 grit sandpaper. 320 would be the finest I would go. If you're 180 to 220, that would be optimum. Sand all your areas, whether you use the orbital with the interface pad, if you have a lot of um, uneven surfaces or you do it by hand it's really your choice and how much time and what equipment you have once you're done sanding it you're going to go over the whole area again with scotch bright get all the hard to reach spots anywhere you think this product is going to land you're going to want it scuffed you don't want to have it start peeling on you once you've gotten it all sanded down blow it out with some compressed air get rid of all the loose debris all the dust from sanding wipe it down with the wax and grease remover let that stuff dry off, then you do your taping. Your prep is everything. With any project you spray or you roll or whatever you do, prep is everything. So take your time with your cleaning, take your time with your taping and with your sanding, do a nice job. Once you have it taped off and you have it masked the way you want it, I would recommend you mix up all your bottles. On an eight foot bed, you're gonna use about a kit and a half. So get all your bottles mixed with its hardener, 
and with its, you know, whatever tint you're using, have them ready to go. Now, that's not a time to start rushing once you start spraying. The stuff has a very good pot life. You can take your time with it. When you're spraying, you start in the hard to reach areas, you start in the nooks, the crannies, the corners, you get those sprayed, then you work your way to your flat surfaces. Whatever you spray, try to look at it as a grid. Break it off in certain sections, do that section, and move on. Now with your style of spraying, you want to stay distance about 8 to 10 inches, and you want to do what I call a crisscross. You go vertical one way, horizontal the next, or vice versa. That's going to help it lay down even, and that's going to help it from having a streaking effect where it looks like it's a little shinier or a little duller in certain areas. When you're spraying, try to get a decent overlap. So as you spray the line you just did, you want to overlap that other line maybe about 50%. Now with the type of gun they give you, it's harder to do that because it doesn't spray like a fan, like a normal spray gun, but you can get a decent overlap with the gun. Um, as I'm spraying, I'm looking at my coverages. I'm seeing how it looks. If it looks a little lighter, a little darker, I will adjust to that as I go. Now, the two options when spraying this stuff is a one coat, which has to be heavier, or you could do two coats. If you have the time, the two coats are the best. You do a decently heavy coat where you get probably 70% coverage on your first one, and then your second coat is a lighter coat and more of a dust coat. You're going to want to follow a similar pattern when you spray the second coat, but you could be a little bit more farther away from the panel and you can kind of let that material kind of lay over more evenly. So this way you get a nice uniform surface. So two coats is the best, but this project I only did one coat and I looked at it the next day and I'll show you guys at the end of the video what it looked like and I think the coverage came out nice and even. Now when you're spraying these small areas, these small pieces, just try to make sure you get good even coverage. The pattern is not as important, it's not as critical. Just take your time, good even coverage, don't rush. That's the key to this. Don't rush, take your time, and your project will look great. Appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. It's been a couple days since this got sprayed and I wanted to just do a quick follow up, show you guys what the end product looks like. I think it looks pretty decent. Definitely a lot better than it was. There's the grill sitting in the back. Um, of course, I'll do a, another video when I start putting this back together. I got all the lights I got to put in it. I got all the little accessories I bought for it and whatnot. So as that gets done, I'll, I'll do updates on it. But I wanted to show you the end product of the bed, how it came out, how it looks. And I just wanted to cover a couple more items. So as far as total kits used... To do the bed itself with the extra parts, I used six liters, which is one and a half kits. Now on the entire truck, I had ordered basically five kits. It took four complete kits to do the blue and the gray originally. On a truck of this size, even a crew cab, you're gonna be all of four kits to do the entire vehicle. Now. When you mix these kits, you can reduce down with urethane reducer, you can reduce down so you get a little bit more product, but your coverage is not gonna be as thick. So if you had to stretch the product, if you didn't purchase enough and you're in the middle of the project and you have urethane reducer, you can reduce up to 15% by volume. I'm not gonna get into the specifics on how to do that, um, I actually wouldn't recommend doing it. What I would recommend, if you're going to do a large project, if you buy it from Amazon or eBay, the kits, you could always return a kit you don't use. And you'd rather have it and not need it than be the other way around and need it and not have it. So the bed was one and a half kits. The complete truck was about, eh, it was actually two kits of the blue full and one kit of the gray for the top, plus I think I went one extra bottle. So two for the blue. So if you had if you had three kits, you could definitely do the whole a whole truck, but you're gonna need four, maybe a little extra if you wanna do the bed included, all right? So I really hope this video series answered any questions you have. I hope you guys can go back and you know watch it again and reference it like I said earlier. Appreciate it as always. And uh, there's the cat. Cat wanted to say hi. 
Niket, she appreciates it also. Voodoo is very happy for all our viewers. So just wanted to get back with you guys. Have a great day.